Hey guys, let's get more news about SAN Francisco 49ers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. 2024 NFL Season, Grades for Teams Coming Off of Their Week 9 Bye The Pittsburgh Steelers and San Francisco 49ers will be back on the field this week, and both playoff contenders have stiff challenges. The AFC North leaders will be in D.C. to take on the Commanders, while the Niners are in Tampa to take on the slumping but dangerous Buccaneers. How have these two playoff teams from a year ago fared after eight outings this season? Mike Tomlin's team got off to a 3-0 start this season and went into the off week with a three-game winning streak. In between were consecutive three-point losses to the Colts and Cowboys, but the bottom line is that first-place Pittsburgh owns a 6-2 record with nine games to go. Veteran quarterback Russell Wilson has started the last two games in place on Justin Fields, as the team was looking for more of a downfield passing presence. Talented George Pickens looks like a different wide receiver, with the 13-year pro throwing in the ball. Running back Najee Harris has rushed for 100-plus yards in three straight games. The defense has been solid, but has shown some vulnerability to the run at times. TJ Watt remains one of the NFL's top playmakers on this side of the ball. General manager Omar Khan swung two deals this week to bolster the roster before the team's gauntlet versus their AFC North rivals. After Sunday's visit to Washington, the Steelers play six of their final games versus their AFC North foes. Khan traded for wide receiver Mike Williams, Jets, and outside linebacker Preston Smith, Packers, adding experience depth. After facing the Commanders on Sunday, Tomlin's club plays six of its final eight games versus its AFC North rivals. It's been an uneven year for Mike for Kyle Shanahan's defending conference champions. It began with 2023 NFL Offensive Player of the Year, Christian McCaffrey, unavailable for the first eight games. He returned to the practice field earlier this week and is expected to play against the Buccaneers in Tampa on Sunday. Injuries have been a big issue for this club throughout the year. Versatile Debo Samuel has once again had trouble staying healthy, and fellow wide receiver Brandon Ayuk is out for the rest of the season. Shanahan may have Super Bowl 58 standout Joan Jennings this week as well. Regardless, only the Ravens have averaged more total yards per game than the 49ers. The ground game has been productive for Jordan Mason, filling in for McCaffrey. The Niners' defense has been highly erratic this year, allowing 20 offensive touchdowns, 10 rushing, 10 passing, in eight games. Quarterback Brock Purdy has had his ups and downs, committing nine of the team's 11 turnovers. The NFC West is currently a bundled mess, but what is very concerning for the Niners is the fact that the team is 1-2 versus their division rivals this season, including a home loss to the first-place Cardinals. A healthier team could go on a second-half run and could need that if they are to win the NFC West for a third consecutive year. Golden Nuggets, it's finally happening? He's been awesome these last two days, Shanahan said. You never know, about, a setback or anything, but these two days have been great, and I expect to see him out there. San Francisco 49ers defensive coordinator Nick Sorensen, offensive line-slash-run game coordinator Chris Forster, and quarterback Brock Purdy spoke to reporters before Thursday's practice as the team prepares for its Week 10 matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Here's everything they said. Yes, the pre-stretch activation period the Saints coach was referring to is mandatory for the 49ers. They step over hurdles, do light running and jumping, and otherwise get their bodies warm for the stretch. This season, the 49ers are playing in NFL high four teams coming off a bye. For perspective, only one other team, the Colts, has more than two such games and 23 teams play one or zero opponents coming off a bye. That explains why the 49ers have a historic negative rest differential, the number of days a team has off between games compared to its opponent. Their rest differential, minus 22, is the third worst in the NFL since 2002, according to NFL analyst Warren Sharp. 
In the 49ers' previous two games, a Week 7 loss to the Chiefs and a Week 8 win against the Cowboys, their opponent was coming off a bye. After playing the Bucks, they will host the Seahawks on November 17 when Seattle is coming off a bye. Then, after visiting Green Bay on November 24, they will trek to Buffalo on December 1 when the Bills are coming off a bye. Shanahan said. Hopefully it won't be too big of a deal, but halfway through practice, his calf was bothering him, so we shut him down there. Though it was an interesting decision by Shanahan, no, I don't think letting Clay Kubiak call the preseason plays had any effect on the 49ers' offense. Despite some clunky moments and the absence of Christian McCaffrey, the 49ers' offense is still ringing up top five numbers in almost every important category. For instance, the 49ers are the number two ranked team in yards per play at 6.5. The main problem has been the struggle to score touchdowns once the 49ers get into the red zone, 48.6%, ranked 28th in the league. But two things about that, one, they've had an uptick over the last three games, 61.5%, and two, getting McCaffrey back Sunday or a little later should put them back near 70% the rest of the way, which is where they were last season. 49ers star provides honest thoughts on Baker Mayfield. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers host the San Francisco 49ers in Week 10, and with a three-game losing streak, they're in desperate need of a win in order to resurrect their chances of making the playoffs. Last season, the Buccaneers won the NFC South, made the playoffs and upset the Philadelphia Eagles in the wild-card round, and it was mainly due to the play of Baker Mayfield, the quarterback who had been consistently criticized and doubted in his previous five seasons. Mayfield made the Pro Bowl and seemed to finally become the player people saw in him when he was the number one overall pick in the 2018 NFL Draft by the Cleveland Browns. Niners middle linebacker Fred Warner recently paid Mayfield some serious respect by praising him in multiple categories. I've always respected his game, his mindset, the way that his teammates talk about him, the leadership, the competitiveness, man. He's just a dog, so he's gonna fight. Warner said, via GOAT Farm Sports. Mayfield has thrown for 2,389 yards and an NFL-high 23 touchdowns, while completing 71.4% of his pass attempts through nine games. However, he has been facing a serious challenge with wide receiver Chris Godwin out for the season with an ankle injury and wideout Mike Evans dealing with a hamstring injury. As for the 49ers, they could welcome back star running back Christian McCaffrey, as well as wide receiver Jawan Jennings. Tampa Bay is 4-5 and two games behind the Atlanta Falcons for first place in the NFC South, and given the injury situation, another division title seems extremely unlikely right now. Robert is a Los Angeles area native and has been an avid NFL and NBA fan since he was a little kid. He. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Baker Mayfield? Leave your opinion in the comments.